debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for if ye forgive me and their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you verse 15 but if ye forgive not me and their trespasses neither will your father forgive you your trespasses I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Loyam, by Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Rachakudash Rukatham. I'm going to say double honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach and do rule well. I'm going to say peace and salutations to the Akim, across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom Wam to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, but subscribe to this truth to you. I say Shalom Wam. Your brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant, coming at you with another lesson through the Spirit and through the power of Yahweh Shemel Shai. And um, this has been a profound, very spiritual Passover for me myself. I've heard, you know, a few brothers say certain things, but you know, it's very, very spiritual. Um, one of our elders in our camp made a statement about how when you the holy spirit dealing like say for instance you going off and whatever way you going off it maybe you drinking too much maybe you whatever you're doing you're not studying enough you uh you know participating more folly than doing anything spiritual you know the holy spirit should correct you before the most high you know sends judgment to correct you you know and um i heard the brother say that but then i, I literally um experienced something recently and you know it's spiritual because how the lord would do something sometimes like i was talking to a brother uh, about a particular matter you know he was doing he was helping me out being a brother and we were helping each other out put it like that and uh we got to conversing and he was telling me about something he was battling and going through and how it was spiritual because he was like you know he had basically the lord did certain things to him but he didn't really judge him like he can be and he was saying how he realizes like the first time this happened the second time this happened so he was like he could see his leading up to the lord judging him and he was like pretty much before he get judged he was like he grateful that the lord showed mercy because that gives him an opportunity to correct correct himself and it, you know i just did a video about mercy and forgiveness because i was battling something you know uh, and it's so spiritual because like i said I was allotted the ability to bless the elders with a couple of dollars. So I did that. And, you know, through the spirit, something like this, like I didn't know that was bothering me, actually was bothering me, came to the forefront. It was very, very spiritual. And, you know, the scary part about it is based on that scripture. I mean, we read the scriptures, but do you really meditate or do you really, you know, is it just lip service or what? You know what I mean? Like in my mind, I I believe I forgave a brother because, you know, scriptures talk a brother. It's a brother. It's a quote that a brother's quote within the camp. They say it's a famous brother. I ain't going to say his name. He says, I mean, if you know, you know, you know, you know, that's, you know, the society we in, the secret brotherhood, you know what I mean? Uh, but what, what it's a brother that says you ain't got to like every brother but you got to love every brother meaning you got to be a brother so if a brother's need if a need you show because love is an action word so you show that by doing and although this brother that i'm talking about that you know basically this situation i'm going through pretty much placed a huge stumbling block before me but in my mind i didn't see it like that because i would still do stuff for him but in actuality i truly didn't forget his brother and it's scary because we yet you know, it's Passover. You know, we just went to Passover and all that. So, you know, thing is, you know, the Lord, you know, could do whatever he want. He could forgive a man. He, you know what I mean? Like, he could do what he want, you know. My brother used the phrase one time, um, not uptight. I mean, not that uptight. But it also tells you in the scriptures that, you know, you can repent and the Lord can still judge you. You know, look at Esau. Esau, you know, saw it heavily with tears. But, you know, basically he, um, you know, had no place for repentance. You know, so, you know, I'm old enough. I understand that, you know, you can say sorry. Like I try to teach my children that, uh, you know, yeah, you can make a mistake, but sometimes you can make a mistake. And no matter how much you say sorry, it don't matter. So with that all being said, I didn't realize how much I was going off. And, you know, I talked to and hashed it out with this brother. And like I said, again, it's scary because he even admitted it. He was like, it's scary because, you know, we think we doing the right thing, which we are doing the right thing. But at the same time, we are at the mercy and the will of the Lord. Like I realized the Lord know how exactly how he created me. So he knew what would bother me. And I was just thinking like, damn, he letting Satan test me, you know, because I was tested by Satan when I first came to the truth. 
Like that was one of the reasons why I actually came to the truth. You know, the Lord showed me Satan was real before he showed me y'all bunch of me on show was real. So then I came to understand, damn, the Lord cold, you know what I mean? That's scary, you know what I mean? Um, but I'm not going to go into depth or detail, you know what I mean? Just this is, you know, like I said again, me and a brother and another brother, you know, I've been talking to a few different brothers and, you know, just they seeing spiritual things. And I remember that one of the elders, you know, uh, some spiritual happened at a study and he was going into like, you know, the latter, the, the, the latter and the, for, the former and the latter rank and, you know, about the increases. And I got out of that, you know, because he was real adamant about going into the breakdown of that. He was talking about like he's going to be a spiritual, uh, uh, basically a, a spiritual harvest or reaping or increase. And, you know, brother's going to get blessed with, you know, more, uh, you know, knowledge of the scriptures or, you know, be able to, you know, ascertain or uh, what's the word? Uh, hold in more milk or you know more the doctrine you know how you know because you got you know when you actually in the spirit you know what to say uh the scripture's gonna flow like water but it's also gonna be an increase of them spirits you know them left hand spirits and brother seeing all that you know so like i said again it just made me want to go back into mercy because uh you know i did a video on mercy but, you know, really meditating on it. I'm like, damn, you know, because it's mercy that the Lord allowed us to actually see what's about to take place. It's mercy that the Lord um, giving you an opportunity to get right. You know what I mean? It's mercy um, that the Lord opened our eyes, you know, to the truth. Because you got a lot of these people that are blinded. They don't even realize what's going on. You know, Lord just blessed me with a job. And it's spiritual, me and the brother that, you know, I ain't going to say it's an ought, but the, this brother, because, you know, we it was a council done and everything and brothers you know it's just showing you i was like well, damn you know what i mean do i have a hard time articulating myself when in actuality like i'm like one of the oldest brothers in the camp i didn't been able to talk to these people about this housing jobs my children but now i can't explain myself to brothers so i mean you know for whatever reason the lord got that like that but you know brothers was making it like you know it wasn't about the judgment you know i'm not expecting oh you should want to get judged it's about the fact that you know what i mean like you'll be surprised by saying something what that can do you know everything ain't just let the lord play out because it might, it might be the lord got the spirit on you to say something i bet you if any brother had a beloved child that was wandering too close to the street you just gonna let that child get hit by a car you know you're gonna fucking go over there and move that child so i mean at the end of the day, I do understand that it was the will of the Lord for this to happen. I mean, especially towards me. But like I said, it's scary because we both was up there like, damn, you know, he realized what he did. Because I said, damn, you pretty much just put place a stumbling block in front of me. And that's when he got it. And it was deep because he's like, damn, that's scary. You know what I mean? But at the same time, he can't got, he ain't got to continuously, you know, like at the end of the day, a brother gave me some sound counsel. He said, we got to take ourselves out the equation. And when I did that, I ended up speaking to another brother. And in actuality, maybe it ain't just me. Maybe that's just how that brother moved. Because he could, he told me similar things, how he felt about this and that and what he did to him. And I'm like, damn, you know what I mean? But the difference was he wasn't butt hurting and, and, and dwelling on it. So the true thing with forgiveness is you don't dwell on it or bring it up. So I truly, I guess, didn't forgive him. And I want to say Salaki, y'all about Shemiel Shah, to um, that brother for that. But like I said, again, me and that brother talk and call lawyer like y'all about Shemiel Shah that he opened my eyes to it because that's the scary part about it. Like you have individuals going off, you know, like, like for instance, with that same brother, I tried to give him a piece of advice, you know, and give him some game and he didn't want to see it, couldn't see it, you know, to the point I had a counsel, got rebuked and then come to find out what I was telling him, he is admitting like, damn, I wish I took your counsel. You know what I mean? So it's like the Lord wanted that to happen, though. So I get certain things and certain things I don't get, you know, and, you know, that's why I'm in my position and certain individuals are in theirs and everybody's going to be held accountable. And that's scary. So, like I said, understand what you were part of, because like I said, again, I was thinking about like, damn, I could be judged. I could have I could received mercy. I could be judged. But also, you know, that's how much the Lord testing us. That's why you got to constantly be on your, your 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 square. Like, you know, I've heard you brothers use that um term because again correction can come from judgment you know like i say if you tr truly a chosen vessel of the lord he could fuck you up and still leave you with the ability to do the work you know you, all you really need is you know the mouthpiece you know what I mean? you know like i said you can cripple you you can do anything and that's the power we're dealing with 
So, you know, uh, I just thought about some scriptures on um, mm -hmm. forgiveness. You know, because at the end of the day, think about it. The Lord, you know, forgave us of our sins. This is the book of Numbers chapter um, 14 and verse 18. And it reads, the Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. And by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. And when you understand that, that means that, you know, we come back every third or fourth generation, uh, regenerate, you know, come back in the flesh. And that's when you serve out, you know, the judgment for what you've done in the flesh, you know. So, you know, but, but, but you know, the scriptures tell you that you're not going to pay for what your, your father did or, you know, that's that's mercy. You know what I mean? This is the book of Psalm chapter 51. You know, you only going to pay for what you did. You know what I mean? Because you are your forefathers coming back. This is the book of Psalm chapter 51 and verse 1. And it reads, Have mercy upon me, O power, according to thy love and kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And you got to understand, we as a nation completely went off. You know, brothers can re recall and bring to recollection what they were doing on this life, in this lifetime. But what about the lifetimes before? You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, you got to remember when you read the scriptures, Yahweh Shah pretty much didn't sin. So why did he have to suffer that, you know, death the way he did? Because of what he did in his past life. So you got to be constantly in prayer and ask for forgiveness. You know, again, the water y'all about on shot that he brought it to my recollection and to realize. And the crazy part is, I just like that brother couldn't see what he was doing that was going off, and you know, I couldn't see that I really was harping and you know holding. You know what I mean? I'm thinking because oh, I do this with, with scriptures like the brother would probably bring it out if I was in front of that brother. You know, giving a gift um, grudgingly. I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm not being, uh, you know, but if I feel some kind of way and not willing to forgive him, then, you know, and, and like I, I started with that scripture at the end of the day, you know, uh, I, I'm going to be forgiven if I don't want to forgive, you know. And like I said again, we, you know, true forgiveness is you're not going to keep on harping or bringing up something that took place. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 103 and verse 10. And it reads, he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. That's how merciful the Most High Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is. You got individuals that have committed sins unto death, and you know we're we're still here. You know, I know I've committed adultery in the world. The Lord could have judged us on that. You know, so again, it made me think, and it's cutting my spirit because you know all the many sins we did, and you know. But when we're forgiven and washed in the blood, you know, that's not thought about or looked at. So who am I to be able to think I'm going to be able to hold something over a brother's head? Although no matter what he did, and again, like I said, a brother had to tell me something. And he said, maybe it ain't Jew. Maybe it's that brother's spirit. That's something that he got to deal with. You know, and that's scary. You know what I mean? Like verse 11, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. And I really, truly believe that because I'm thinking about that now. Like the Lord had me, you know, it was like a demon on me. You know what I mean? It, it took for me to talk to another uh, 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 another brother and basically, you know what I mean, give me certain, you know, information because the counsel didn't really help me. It was certain things I took away from him and certain things, you know, to me in my mind, like I say, it's easy to say certain shit when you haven't experienced it. But a particular individual, a particular I think so, individual brother told me certain things and, and like he could relate. And I'm like, damn. But he didn't have no grudge or he didn't feel no kind of way. So that I'm like, what kind of pussy, <laughs> pussy bullshit I'm on? You know what I mean? No matter, yeah, I, I was wrong, but maybe I wasn't wrong in the eyes of the Lord. You know, I know I wasn't. This was a huge test. And at the council, the brother said that. So sometimes we go through certain things as tests. So it was very, I mean, all, the council was spiritual, but it wasn't meant for me to get what I needed from the council. It was meant for me to get it from the brother. It was all things working together like the Lord do. Verse uh, 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. And that cuts. Because like I said, again, I, I, I supposed to have been forgiven sin for, for all the sins I've done. And I know I've done some shit that is deserving of death. I can think of two or three right now. So how am I going to hold that over that brother's head? It's the book of 1 John, chapter 1, 
and I'm going to start at verse 7, and it reads, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us because we all have sin. So, again, I can't hold that over that brother. Yeah, it hurt, you know, but at the same time, you know, again, the Lord does certain things for growth or judgment. I mean, you know, this is the Lord's show. You know, of course, it hurt when you call yourself dealing with me and the Lord that's supposed to move a certain kind of way and did, you know, certain shit happened that you looking at it because that was my stumbling block i'm like damn you know like we've all sacrificed people in the world for brothers in the truth that's the mindset we supposed to have and then when somebody that you believe is a spiritual brother do you like a nigga in the world uh like and, and, and you know my mindset is i've always been this way i don't like to be around people i feel some kind of way about because you know <laughs> it's the same my brother used to say you say first time shame on you second time shame shame on me and he say shame shame because it ain't about you know, you let them do it again, but what I'm going to do to you, you know, so, you know, is you know, so it, it's deep. Verse nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And again, I was battling with the fact that it wasn't even about what happened because I got over that to a degree. It was the fact that he didn't acknowledge he did nothing wrong. And I'm like, damn. You know, I watch how the brother move and his his character within the the, the, the the truth. Brothers look at him like, oh, the beloved, and you no, know, he can't do no wrong. But then I'm like, well, so what is it about him that he did me like that? And then to come to find out, certain other individuals he did a certain kind of way, and I'm like, damn. So again, like I say, it's a reason why, like, some within his spirit. And like I said again, you gotta believe what you what you read, because like I said, we gonna come into really, really, really tough times, and I've been through a lot in this truth. Not saying taken away from nobody else but it's just like you know again like i told the brothers at the council lord willingly i'm able to overcome this and and i believe i have through that testimony of that particular brother because like i said again it's easy to say you know that's like a, a person that literally ain't never been through a particular thing you can't say if you can do it until you did it you get what i'm saying even if you ain't pretty much accomplish it you know what I mean? You've been through it, so you can speak on it more than somebody that ain't. You know what I mean? It's easy to say them things. You know, certain brothers don't even want to be around niggas in the world. So when a brother in the truth do something to you that you feel is like a nigga in the world, that was a hell of a stumbling block. But like I said, I forgive that brother, and I don't want him judged on that. And I said that whole thing, so I'm like, but again, I had to meditate on him. I'm like, well, damn, did you really truly forgive him? Because if you ain't letting it go if you think you're gonna bring it up whenever you get in your feeling and that's that was really satanic i i can't that was really satanic call lawyer my y'all should say he brought it to the light though and like i said and i want to thank the elders even though they probably don't know about it but it's all through the spirit like i said i've never sent the elders money or i don't recall i probably put in money to send the elders but i've specifically sent the elders some money this time and like i said it just it was so spiritual how it all took place you know and I was like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't intending to do something, but did try to do it for a particular um, elder. And it put me in a situation where something came out, and then there was a whole council about it. It's just deep. And then the brother that I bump heads with just so happened to be at the same spot where I'm trying to go do this one thing. Not he not expecting to see me, and I'm not expecting to see him. Then he was like, pretty much he had a vision or a dream. Like, he didn't say exactly when, where he... Uh, it was going to be, we was going to sit up here and have a conversation about something of, of it. Cause like I said, he know to a degree what he did. He felt bad about it. My whole thing I was hung up about is he never acknowledged it. Because the thing is this, when you apologize, you acknowledge you did wrong. That's why we're repenting to the Lord. Cause what stops you from doing it again? We not niggas. We supposed to be, we supposed to be like, you know what I mean? And yeah, but a brother told me something that actually helped. He said, you know, take yourself out the equation. And when I did that, that's when I could start seeing the scriptures again. It ain't about me. If Yahweh Shah can forgive, like, I'm, I'm probably going to end it with this because I got to go back to the fucking plantation. But, you know, this is the book of Luke chapter 18. I mean, this is the book of Luke chapter 23, it, uh, verse 34, and it reads, Then said Yahweh Shah, father forgive them for they know not what they do and they parted his raiment and cast lots and the people stood beholding and the rulers also with them derided him saying he saved others let him save himself if he be mashiach the chosen 
of the Most High and the spiritual because, you know, he was still forgiven. You know, that was the thing. So if the Lord, while they was crucifying him, if he could forgive and say, forgive them for they know not what they do, who the fuck am I to think I'm so much, or he off, or I'm so much better? We all ain't shit. And I know for a fact it's certain things I did. You know, it's sins that I can count that I know when you read the scripture say are deserving of death. <laughs> That's the phone chime. Verse, uh, Lord, willingly, I, I pray the Lord, and that's why I pray for mercy. You know, and that brother deserved mercy as well because, it, like the brother said, he said, you know, why do you cast away a stone, a, a, a good stone? We we already few on stones. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 18, and verse 22. Yahweh shall say unto him, I say not unto thee, unto Salakia. Matthew 18, and verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times. Verse 22. Yahweh shall say if Unto him, I say not unto thee unto seven times, but unto seventy-seven times. You know, so you got to constantly, you know, you're going to forgive. Uh, you know, like you got to constantly be forgiving your brothers because we in this flesh and you're going to go off. You know what I mean? I'm going to probably end it with this. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22. And it reads... I'm going to start at verse 21. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Verse 22, and almost all things are by the law purged. It's lucky. And almost all things are purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So, you know, the law states that, you know, um, that's why, like, when you go into the book of Numbers, it talks about by the shedding of blood is the land clean. That's why there's going to be a lot of violence that's going to take place in this, on, on the planet Earth. At the end of the day, though, you know, um, we were so blessed that we got this truth because we necessarily don't have to be destroyed. Like the two thirds are going to be destroyed on the side for going off. And that's how they're going to basically be cleansed to receive the kingdom. But, you know, the hopeful elect, they were given, you know, a spiritual, you know, they were bathed in Yahweh's blood. So we don't necessarily have to, you know, shed blood on this side to receive, you know, that forgiveness. That's a hell of a gift, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, the Lord, you know, while they always talk about, you know, the Lord is merciful. Yeah, he, he is, but he's also, you know, full of wrath, you know, because the Most High is not just one dimensional. You know, He just like we got emotions, he has emotions. So, you know, so, you know, that's why he's so upset at what's going on on the planet. But, again, I just wanted to make that lesson because, again, it's, you know, the spirit really hit me like, damn, you know what I mean? I was going to fuck off. And, you know, the water y'all about my shot for that. And, you know what I mean? It was spiritual. How, again, how the Lord broke it down. I talked to one brother and he was like, you know, he seen this. He recognized something. And I already knew that. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, the Lord can wake you up by getting judged. But for you to get it without having to be judged right before the judgment, that's a call law. you like, y'all about my shot. So with that, I'm going to end the lesson. If you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, similar Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of your power, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Hashem Yahushah, or you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Allah Yom Yahweh Hashem Yahushah, Hashem Rechak, Kudash I want to say double honors to my apostles. The elders of the great millstone who teach and do rule well. I want to say peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwa, thought that listening and learning, Lord, willingly, this was edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the name of scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like other nations, but subscribing to the truth. To you, I say Shalom. To the next time we'll ever come with another lesson, I say Shalom, Shalom, and Kwam, Kwam Yashraba.